So I guess to start with kind of an overview and demo of some of these things. Uh, there's two technologies we're going to be talking about today. One is uh, the Microsoft Connect, which I right here. Uh, this is the first one that we're actually going to be talking about. Essentially, this is uh, about four cameras, I believe, and a microphone put together. And the purpose of it is um, take away the controller, essentially. It's not just a game, uh, but also sort of what the Xbox or the, or the media device in some case works. But uh, there's sort of a little tech demo here, and this is just sort of on your screen how this works. Uh, essentially, what it is doing is tracking me uh, as the controller. So it can pretty much pick up anything as far as how I'm moving, and you can see sort of those little touch points that are next to the box under my hand. Uh, obviously, this can be used uh, for gaming purposes, but one of the cool things that Microsoft has also done is rethink the interface uh, for their actual system. And so uh, now, once you actualize it, if I want to go as far as open the tray on the Xbox, for example, I can do that just simply. Close it. Uh, if I had an Xbox Live profile, we don't have all the online stuff connected here in the lab uh, quite yet with the Kinect, but uh, you can supposedly active Netflix and library and do all that kind of stuff. So a lot of people have been kind of asking uh, us at the educational gaming conference, well, what is what is the educational purpose of this, right? Are we going to see a lot of educational games that are going to involve people getting up? The short answer is yes, I think. I mean, we're still very early on in the process, so I don't know that we're necessarily there quite yet. This, this technology has only been out since maybe about a million and a half, I think, sold so far. Uh, in that short period of time, I think Microsoft is expecting to sell something like five million uh, over the holiday break. So we should start to see a lot more of this. Uh, but to me, this is kind of the real, uh, uh, as far as how this stuff is kind of been explained. The way we think about gaming or about interfacing generally, uh, same way kind of the iPad or the iPhone or the Switch, even the mouse now, controller is starting to be more. Uh, a quick and dirty. Um, it's, uh, it's $150 retail if you're interested in purchasing one of these devices. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think it, it takes a little while to get sort of depth perception and things like that going. Uh, <laughs> well, but I think this is one of the really cool parts about this. Very, very intuitive device where my wife hates video games. Uh, and she hates me when I play video games. But she was able to come downstairs, pick this up, and start to, to sort of interface with it. No uh, introduction whatsoever. Which very interesting, especially I'm, I'm just a gamer myself. And the controllers are very, very complicated in a lot of cases. And so, especially if you're thinking about education, it's not something where you can just say to a class of people who may or may not have any clue. Hey, you guys are going to Something like this, everybody can figure out how to wave, how to raise their hand, how to put their hand. So it lets you think about sort of getting people engaged in education or in moving around some kind of interface in totally different ways that we've never really had access to before. So we'll pause on, on the Kinect for a moment and I'll switch, switch over to the PS3 Move. So this is the other device. This is the PlayStation Move. Uh, it is a very small little controller that looks a lot like the Wii, uh, if you're familiar with that. We have some stuff over here to show how the Wii that looks. But essentially, it's Sony's version of the Wii. Uh, it comes with a little camera. Here's a very small version of kind of what Microsoft has set up. Uh, and I can see it up here. Package with this little guy down here. Uh, it also has a built in microphone on it. Uh, the little bundle, so the controller plus the uh, the camera and microphone will go for about $100. Uh, and it's been out since September, I think. And I think it's about a million that have been sold so far. I'm not sure what their estimates are for uh, holiday season. But again, you know, it's another example of a company getting involved uh, with these sort of kinetic uh, controller options. Uh, so what the, the move 
Uh, essentially, the way it works is it might look a little strange. You have this little uh, ball. How's it going? Come on in. Uh, you have this little ball on the end that's filled with kind of an LED light. What happens is that the camera actually is picking up on this light. So the light can change color depending on the room you're in. Uh, or if you're playing a game, if you're playing it in the dark and you want it to be a different color, you can set it up to change colors. The camera is actually isolating on this little ball. So that's how it sort of uh, gets the sense of depth and the way that it works that way. So as you go sort of forward back, you can see how the menu. Sorry we couldn't project this. Some students decided to rewire our system. Uh, but you can see as you sort of move forward and back and start to swing around, it'll all have an impact on the way that you move. The controller, but it's essentially just queuing on this little ball, which is a big difference uh, when you're coming from the connect, which is using your body. And that's when we get into sort of talking about some of the differences and, and some of the ways that this gets complicated. Uh, that's kind of a good example. But I'll show you just sort of a quick game talk about sort of the, in this case, the interface that has changed. Uh, Sony so far is really just using this sort of for, uh, for gaming purposes that I'm aware of, so I imagine that they'll have plans to expand that. Forward, but uh, so I'm just going to queue up an archery game real quick and kind of get a sense of how this all works. Chris, yeah. What do you think is the technological differences between the Wii and what they already have on the Wii? So, like the Wii, this controller has uh, an accelerometer, which means that sort of it picks up the speed at which you're moving your hands to sort of get if you're swinging something, how hard you're swinging or how fast you're swinging. Um, the biggest thing for uh, for me, as far as the technology, is kind of Sony's approach to building games for it. I think Nintendo tends to be much more sort of family-oriented, where Sony is taking kind of a more mature approach. Uh, and so in some cases that means violent content, but it also means sort of different, not Nintendo content. A lot of, so Nintendo does a lot of Mario and a lot of movement kind of stuff. Uh, Sony, I think, has, has more ambitions of bringing a lot of their high-end commercial games uh, into this space. So I know, Derek, you're a PlayStation guy like Killzone. For example, I think is which is one of their huge sellers. The idea is to find a way to work this into the way that games are already being built, uh, so that you can play that sort of really high-end, uh, big-time title using something like this. Whereas I think with the with the Wii, the idea was really build games around the controller. But that's a good question because I think it's so new at this point for Sony that they haven't necessarily, well, at least not released it to us uh, as a public. Um, but so what you see on the screen, or what you can kind of see on the screen now, is sort of the calibration process for this. And so you can see with the camera, it's looking at me now, and uh, it's asking me to sort of calibrate the little controller. Uh, so it wants me to get on my side, up on my shoulder. Um, one thing about these technologies uh, that is sort of interesting is, is the sense of space that really becomes a part of this. And so if you're on your couch just sort of hanging out, relaxing, you're not used to this idea that um, this idea that you know I'm sort of existing in my room. And for those of you who have Wii's, you sort of may have gotten that sense that I can't go knocking over the, the lamp or something like that. Uh, but these things do require a little bit of space, and because they both use cameras, you can't stand right on top of your television uh, to use them. I think they recommend between six and ten feet for both systems. So it is something that's important to consider for home use. For classroom use, it may not be as big a deal, uh, but it is just something to think about. I'm still sort of getting the hang of how to interface with the uh, PlayStation back end. Probably just talk. Um, so this is an archery game. Uh, and you see it sort of approximates the motion. Ooh. One thing that's sort of weird about this for me is, uh, and one thing we can talk about sort of in more detail, is kind of how real do you really want it to be? So I was testing this out at, at home, and I was sort of getting into it, right? Archery, you get that sense. And so I'm lining up sort of more like my character, right? I'm trying to sort of pull uh, an arrow out of the quill. And you can see that the move can't really figure out what it is that I'm trying to do, because it's still it's sort of it's looking for this ball. It needs that sort of camera sense. And so you end up with something of an artificial uh, sort of setup where, you know, this is how you would notch an arrow. You know, you can get more or less into it, but you see, even if I put my arm up, like if I was trying to hold a bow, the move starts to sort of freak out a little bit. Uh, and I think some of this is just because it's such a new technology, but uh, if you're thinking about experiences, that's one of the big differences uh, between these two that's really, really nice, is that you can almost forget with the Connect sometimes that you're using 
because your whole body is into it. Uh, and the camera, I think, on the Connect is a little bit more sensitive, uh, a little bit more responsive, and it's a little easier to figure out when something's going wrong. It's really frustrating when I'm standing here like this, and it looks like everything's going, and my guy can't quite grab an arrow, but it's my hands on it. So it is sort of something to think about, is just regardless of whether or not you're building a game or looking to use these kinds of technologies in existing uh, systems, there is sort of a learning curve that goes along with it. And uh, anytime you have a controller of any kind, I think there's going to be a little bit of a barrier uh, to entry into the basics. So, for example, notching an arrow, there was a learning curve for me. I sat there for like five minutes. Like, what am I doing wrong? This is how it's supposed to work. Uh, and it's not quite set up that way. So I think that anytime there's a controller of any, of any capacity, even though these controllers are really nice and they do add a lot of fluidity to the experience, there's going to be some level of learning that goes along with it. But some of it's just because of technology. Um, one thing kind of from an interface perspective that's kind of interesting and I found a little frustrating is that the move will actually incorporate buttons. So there are buttons, and I'll see if I can bring up another one. I'll show you an example of it. But there are, so a traditional PlayStation controller, which for those of you who may not be familiar with, something like this. Uh, it has sort of four buttons. It has two, they call it analog sticks, which are essentially your, how you move around. Uh, and then there are some buttons on the top. And so it's a pretty advanced controller, especially if you're not used to using it. The move takes some of those buttons and moves them. So you have buttons on each side here, uh, and then you have your, your, your end buttons on the sides, as well as a trigger on the bottom. And one of the things that's interesting uh, is that move is actually, at least in, in these sorts of games, tried to combine the experience of sort of the traditional uh, interface with kind of this new movement interface, and it's very, very strange, at least uh, for me. So this game I'm about to pull up is kind of a gladiator sort of game, which is actually a lot of fun. Uh, and you guys can try this too. That's the goal to get you guys in and sort of playing with this kind of stuff. Um, I'll show you an example of what I mean by that, uh, especially when you compare it to the, the Kinect sort of system. Again, and <laughs> so in this game, you're sort of sword fighting with another player, which we've seen sort of things like this before. Um, the, the, the graphics are a little bit better because it's a PlayStation 3. Uh, so you get a sense sort of there, I hit go to the shield and you can swing back this way. But the problem is if he were to swing at me, because you're sort of standing up and you, you have this sort of sense of space, my goal is I want to step back, right? I want to move away from him in some way or I want to step to the right. And after testing the connect, that becomes sort of a very intuitive thing to do, right? You use your body to escape because you're using your arms to move around. But that's not the way it actually works. Because they combine uh, the buttons here, to sidestep, you're actually pressing sort of the triangle button my character starts to move away. Uh, and it kind of blends the traditional way of doing it in the traditional controller with sort of this new controller, which maybe just because it's new for me, I felt like it was a very uncomfortable experience because I'm moving, so let's move, right? Let's get me involved as opposed to I'm moving, but I won't, I'll just sort of stand here and swing like this, uh, which I think was one of the big concerns about the Wii was people learn how to kind of game the system, right? If you're boxing, you're not really boxing, you're sort of you're doing kind of one of these sort of things. And, um, it really takes a lot out of the experience when you're not letting people sort of totally immerse themselves. Which I think is a real strength of the connect. So the analogy I sort of put in my head was that uh, Sony, what they're trying to do is recreate the experiences of real life, at least so far. So for example, we sort of know what it's like to swing something on a sword. That's something we're familiar with. And so they give you something to put in your hand to swing, uh, an, arch, an archery, I'm sorry, you can sort of notch an arrow, right? We understand that sort of idea. But what Microsoft has done is sort of invented their own world, uh, devices, the way that you interface with it. So it's not so much that I'm going to swing a sword with this device that's meant to represent a sword, it's that I'm going to sort of use my body to move myself around, I'm going to use myself to sort of engage with the environment, because there are no buttons, right? There's no sort of fallback uh, to anything that you might know. And so it's a totally different experience, which can be good and bad in a lot of ways. Um, for me, for example, sort of thinking forward, you know, you play games where, for example, you were to ride a horse, right? 
do I want to be in my living room sort of pitched up like this, sort of going along like that? I'm not sure, you know, I mean, maybe that's a good thing. But for me, it seems kind of like a weird thing that I don't necessarily know if I want to get involved with. Um, but by the same token, because I'm moving around, I am having a more engaged experience. With this. Uh, and then obviously the elements of never having to turn it off is just a cool thing. Um, I'll say from kind of my own uh, experience, it's weird not to have anything to hold on to, even though I do find problems with holding on to this controller. It's weird to, to play a game or to imagine a game where you're playing and trying to interface with the world, but you don't have anything. You know, if you were to sort of pick something up, but that something doesn't exist, it's nice to have this. And maybe that's just a mental crutch for me. It's sort of a fallback because it's such a, a weird thing to think about. Uh, and particularly like Minority Report, this is sort of getting to that level, right? I'm moving around interfaces, I'm opening up doors. Um, but who knows, you could imagine a world where your house maybe is run with something like this. Open the freezer, turn on the microwave, start up the oven, turn the temperature down, uh, all sorts of interfaces like that. Uh, for, to me, I think the, the, the move is a lot more set up to be a gaming device, I think, whereas I think the Kinect could really extend itself beyond that. That could be just my opinion uh, and my personal bias. We'll see how all that turns out. But anyway, it, it, it was meant to be sort of a brief presentation, and then I want to let you guys sort of play around with this stuff or you know, talk a little bit about what you guys think or what you're seeing or what brought you here uh, today and where, where you're coming from all this stuff. So at this point, I'll stop talking. Is that going to be a demo? We, that was kind of what the, the interface side of it, yeah. Do you have a question? So we don't, we don't have it yet, but there is a game, um, the move I know that involves painting. That's sort of interesting because the color of the little LED light will actually change depending on if in your world right. into the ink palette. No, no. It's like your color on the screen and then it's all. Which is, I mean, and that's sort of another cool experience, right? Because now, as opposed to throwing yourself into a motion capture world, now the artificial is becoming real in some sense, and so your senses are totally kind of overwhelmed with moving around, your brush is changing color, but it's not really there, um, which is kind of cool, I think. Especially if you think about this kind of education. Have a studio. Supplies for paint. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. It's sort of strange. The one thing that and I know they haven't implemented it yet on the Kinect, but that really I thought was a really strength of it was when they first premiered it, that they were going to allow you to take like a skateboard, like a real life object, and connect it to the can. And I just There's no uh, sound. Oh. Um, so this is what this is is kind of a concept piece that uh, the producers of what used to call it Paul kind of thing.
There you go. Demo sort of goes on. Uh, it's sort of what Derek is mentioning this idea of uh, transferring sort of objects of memory <coughs> space into her space. Here's the Gmail Milo has asked her sort of to play around in this pond and to sort of find out some fish. She, she sees her own reflection. Her hand is actually able to sort of sweep the water and create ripple effects that are happening in there. This is sort of trend. This is kind of blurring the boundaries. This wasn't my This is sort of this artificial construct, right? This was an environment we were to sample experiments. And there's sort of that tactile sensation that we talked about. But I don't think it's quite there. This is another example. So she's drawing a fish. Uh, and obviously, some of this needs to be programmed. But for example, the, the AI character was able to recognize the color. Oh, you might just pick one, which is really sort of like <laughs> she drew with a real pen, a real color on it. Hold it up, and all of a sudden, it, you know, it does have boundaries. It's a program. Really, for, for real, lots of And this is not, is this really a game? So, the bigger question is where is this utility? Yeah, I mean, I mean, stuff like that's happening already with the sort of virtual surgeries now, but it's useless. Without no special equipment, no special apparatuses. I mean, it's not quite, I don't think, at the precision level. I mean, it's sort of like you're still having, I don't know that I would want anyone having surgery on me. Getting there. Product. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so sorry to interrupt the conversation. I just thought that this video was kind of a cool uh, follow up on what Derek was talking about with the real items. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Don't be shy. I know someone wants to embarrass themselves in front of me. Oh, of course. course. I hope for that every day. And All right. Every, every day of the week that ends in AY. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to take a Oh, I, heard, I have my phone story. Go ahead. The camera's right under the TV. Is it, is it four players or is it? Um, it's four players that you don't have the, the pair. <coughs> that was my understanding, yeah. Because if you had if you have pair four controllers, controllers you get two yeah. players. Right. Um, yeah, that's another part of this I forgot to mention. So you can pair up uh, two of these controllers so if you have a story on the machine. Or at least under one here to take the steps out. But. No, unlike the Nemo, you don't physically link it up to the other controllers. So they can reach like. Okay, so this is just meant to sort of get a sense of your space, how it tracks you, how it's connected to things. So this is sort of Microsoft Xbox interface here connected, so if you just wave your hand back and forth. Yeah, of course, I know how many games they have out for it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not to be the um, demon the Oh, okay. So we have to analyze the new product and uh, analyze whether it can. So the team that takes this say it may not reach the expectation of space for the new thing. I think because it's so different and yeah. this is the first one without a you know actual controller. I think it's going to take even longer. Uh, the way the Wii was set up, it was really marketed to I think family and young audience where these are sort of the mature game company. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's gonna take a lot of people to accept especially there's no control here to think. And I'll have to keep working on it, haven't you? Okay. I think it's still pretty high to sort of buy on a win. I think over I think over time it will be selling. And this goes on for those who have it for three people on it. Right. So that's another thing. So if they really want to buy it, they have to buy it. If I want to buy it, if right. I don't have Xbox, I have to buy it. Right. So the Xbox itself will cost about three hundred dollars. Uh, so you're looking Right. There is um, there 
in the dark. Talking about it for education, that's something that we're going to be tracking. Uh, you did that with this? Uh, no, no, this, so this is completely Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's something that's meant to sort of uh, let you get into annotated documents, uh, collaborative with great presentations. So that may be something. Tonight. I remember there was. No, I'm I had to look it up just now. I think it's Johnny Lee at Carnegie Mellon who made a cardboard out of Oliva. Because <coughs> the camera is. This, the Oliva function is to have a camera in the remote, yeah. an input camera that looks at the tester bar, which is not, in fact, a tester bar, but rather a spreadsheet of numbers. So you took the Oliva camera and you used the Bluetooth in it, here, and wrote a whole bunch of software interface, and then like a reflector mm -hmm. made that the smart board pen you know or oh. something on that. That's hard you know yeah he will I fire I heard and I, I don't know if this is true but I heard that he was actually hired by Microsoft to work on that. So awesome. wouldn't surprise me at all yeah. There's a guy in yellow who's already using that and said so this actually kind of does not see three D but like if I'm facing it it captures all of this around the about my ears. Yeah. yeah. I know I should complain about the price of these things because PlayStation 3 is now seeing the park now three hundred dollars and when it first released it was twice that. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything gets cheaper. Yeah. I just, I can remember that press conference mm -hmm. with the guy that it will retail for five hundred ninety nine US dollars. Yeah, we'll put it up on the Oh that hurts so, so bad. Okay. Like, the, like, the great yeah. hilarious video yeah. clip that I watch it. Oh, like, all in good time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just too late. Yeah, they were supposed to have one in the game. So there are some of the early games, the most popular ones I'm aware of, is Simulator sort of feel, uh, which is, if you've ever seen DDR or San Francisco, <laughs> and, and it also captures sort of on these things, so it was really like a first. You did it right now. I have to be like a joke. I'm thankful that we don't have that here. I don't know how to have it here. Because that's the most popular one. Because Microsoft is all there. Funny was it? It wasn't very good. It's not bold because it's more good. It did not bold. It did not bold. So far, that tends to be. I don't see the thing that you click. Uh, it's like way down, clear, oh, almost clear, clear. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. Oh. Guarantee it will get there. Because again, you know, we're used to just control it, control it. What does that mean? There's a the company that makes large spheres. It's not about treadmill, but it's a large spheres. Right, yeah, yeah. Put you in it, put a visor on you, and it's go. And it's made up of all It has a ball bearing that rotates the computer around you. Walk around me. Very, apparently, it's very buoyant. Because you think it would be natural, and the movement is, but your 
head doesn't take it on the back and send it right on your feet. I think that's something we've all been Yeah, perception yeah. is the fact that something is coming at us. You're not going to be like, what's that? Looking at it in the same phase. It's, it's, it's like a television. It's why you might dog so many different things. You don't understand. It's, it's more of a body sort of same way. It's like, well, I'm not moving. But I'm supposed to be moving. But there's something coming up towards the swing, but it's not. It's very particular to that. No shooters quite yet, but they'll be all right. Much fun having a green bug in the holiday. How they look? Okay. Is it out of time? Is that? If we did get the green bug, I think you have perfect. Yeah, even better. I think you did get to try out one thing. But we can just see it. As a, like, dab it up. It's a lightsaber fighting game. It's, it's like a, they, they didn't want to upset Pat and you know, and swing your hand across it. Or perhaps, you know, you could grab like a wooden dowel rod or something and just ask this with that lightsaber. That would probably help you out. It's also a Harry Potter game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm so good for the TV. Yeah. 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 Okay, I've got three you said it. You can't, so if it loses, it's going and loses back. We'll look for you, so I think that's cool. That's one of the things with the move, and I'm not sure why they do it that way. Act is a lot better with that, because you're frozen in space, so then, unless you move, it loses your movement. But when you get back in, it'll find you one time. On the move, exactly what software are you playing on your board? The game itself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, not yes. the game that comes with Okay, I'd imagine that's just the that's game is probably a very glorified tech demo. I'm sure. It is. So I imagine yeah. that they didn't even cross their minds or before the they had a deadline to ship, they were like, Well, this is something we could have done, but the interesting one is on the demo for him. Oh, really? Oh, it actually is really interesting, yeah. But again, it takes a little bit of you have oh, yeah. to have another controller, not another <laughs> move for either the PlayStation controller or the Controller because you need to move your character with the thumb control. Like one of them, yeah, right. Right. most of the action, you can with the buttons and things in the move. But like, if you want to walk forward and play, you have to, like, it's cool they have to hold the controller in hand. It's just getting away. It's a little hard to get used to. Oh, no, it's a lot of And the demo was cool. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, you're opening a car door and you're supposed to do this. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, like yeah. what direction is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, some of them, yeah, it's like you have to point the thing at the screen first and then it'll, yeah, it'll give you another command. Like, it's really, it's not, 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 Got a mouse. 
Yeah. How do I do this thing? Yeah, it, 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 yeah it's like this. I mean, to me, it's kind of good. I think you have to. Yeah. Okay, I was thinking, like, the one thing about Connect that, as a gamer, that right now I don't like, that mindset, like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, it's not like, in the sense of, you know, you get, you can't play it. Yeah. 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 But what would be cool is, I, I know there's a Star Wars game coming out, but it's a trigger down. Yeah, you know, that's what that that would be cool is, you can actually have a position, have a position for it. Where you're making your guy run or shoot or whatever, but when you put the big like force power, you actually push or you pull or you did this and show. Oh, and that would implement it all with the way way standard control. Oh, you know yeah. that. That's the kind of stuff that's really cool. 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 That's yeah. Yeah, exactly. But you know, but something with something with the trigger, you know, yeah, they yeah, recognize yeah. something pulling the trigger. You, you, but you're you trying to take the, 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 you know, what, but the, the image of the gun that's represented on the screen is what you're actually holding right. in your hand. It, it's it's one to one where you're moving and not that you're moving at all. I mean that 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 would be cool. That would be cool. Very good. Well, that was the same sort of thing in terms of weird. Like there was some like the color on it. In terms of weird. Yeah, you know, you had to hold it off again. Yeah. I have shoulders. Yeah. 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 Yeah.